A wireless distribution system is a system enabling the wireless interconnection of access points in an IEEE 802.11 network. It allows a wireless network to be expanded using multiple access points without the traditional requirement for a wired backbone to link them. The notable advantage of WDS over other solutions is it preserves the MAC addresses of client frames across links between access points. An access point can be either a main, relay, or remote base station. A main base station is typically connected to the Ethernet. A relay base station relays data between remote base stations, wireless clients, or other relay stations. To either a main, or another relay base station. A remote base station accepts connections from wireless clients and passes them on to relay stations or to main stations. Connections between clients are made using MAC addresses. All base stations in a wireless distribution system must be configured to use the same radio channel, method of encryption and the same encryption keys. They may be configured to different service set identifiers. WDS also requires every base station to be configured to four to others in the system. WDS may also be considered a repeater mode because it appears to bridge and accept wireless clients at the same time. However, with the repeater method, throughput is halved for all clients connected wirelessly. WDS may be incompatible between different products since the IEEE 802.11-1999 standard does not define how to construct any such implementations or how stations interact to arrange for exchanging frames of this format. The IEEE 802.11-1999 standard merely defines the four-address frame format that makes it possible. Technical, WDS may provide two modes of access point-to-access -access point connectivity, wireless bridging, in which WDS APs communicate only with each other and don't allow wireless stations to access them, wireless repeating, in which APs communicate with each other and with wireless STAs, Two disadvantages to using WDS are, the maximum wireless effective throughput may be halved after the first retransmission being made. For example, in the case of two APs connected via WDS, and communication is made between a computer which is plugged into the Ethernet port of APA and a laptop which is connected wirelessly to APB the throughput is halved, because APB has to retransmit the information during the communication of the two sides. However, in the case of communications between a computer which is plugged into the Ethernet port of APA and a computer which is plugged into the Ethernet port of APB, the throughput is not halved since there is no need to retransmit the information. Dual band radio APs may avoid this problem by connecting to clients on one band radio and making a WDS network link with the other. Dynamically assigned and rotated encryption keys are usually not supported in a WDS connection. This means that dynamic Wi-Fi protected access and other dynamic key assignment technology in most cases cannot be used, though WPA using pre-shared keys is possible. This is due to the lack of standardization in this field, which may be resolved with the upcoming 802.11 standard. As a result only static WEP or WPA keys may be used in a WDS connection, including any STAs that associate to a WDS repeating AP. OpenWRT, a universal third-party router firmware, supports WDS with WPA-PSK, WPA-2PSK, WPA-PSK, WPA-2PSK mixed mode encryption modes. Recent Apple base stations allow WDS with WPA, though in some cases firmware updates are required. Firmware for the Renus SAP 36G Super Access Point and most third party firmware for the link size WT 54G, S, slash GL support AES encryption using WPA 2PSK mixed mode security, and TKIP encryption using WPA PSK, while operating in WDS mode. However, this mode may not be compatible with other units running stock or alternate firmware. Example, suppose you have a Wi-Fi capable game console. This device needs to send one packet to a one host, and get one packet in reply. Network 1, a wireless base station acting as a simple wireless router. The packet leaves the game console, goes over the air to the router, 
which then transmits it across the WAN. One packet comes back, through the router, which transmits it wirelessly to the game console. Total packets sent over the air, 2. Network 2, two wireless base stations employing WDS, one connects to the master base station, that connects over the air to the remote base station, which talks over the air to the game console. The game console sends one packet over the air to the remote, which forwards it over the air to the master, which sends it to the one. Reply comes from the one to the master base station, over the air to the remote, and then over the air again to the game console. Total packets sent over the air, 4. Network 3, two wireless base stations employing WDS, but this time the game console connects by Ethernet cable to the remote base station. One packet goes from the game console over cable to the remote, from there by air to the master, and onto the one. Reply comes from one to master, over the air to remote, over cable to game console. Total packets sent over the air, 2. Notice that Network 1 and Network 3 send the same number of packets over the air. The only slowdown is the potential halving due to the half-duplex nature of Wi-Fi. But Network 2 gets an additional halving because the remote base station uses double the air time because it's retransmitting over the air packets that it has just received over the air. This is the halving that is usually attributed to WDS, but that halving only happens when the route through a base station uses over the air links on both sides of it. That does not always happen in a WDS, and can happen in non WDS. Important note this double hop is not necessarily twice as slow. End to end latency introduced here is in the store and forward delay associated with the remote station forwarding packets. In order to accurately identify the true latency contribution of relaying through a wireless remote station versus simply increasing the broadcast power of the main station, more comprehensive tests specific to the environment would be required. See also, ad hoc wireless network, bridging, wireless intrusion detection system, wireless mesh network, references. External links, Swallow Wi-Fi Wiki. Alternative Wireless Signal Repeating Scheme with DDWT and Auto AP, What is Third Generation Mesh? Review of Three Generation of Mesh Networking Architectures How to Extend Your Wireless Network with Tomato Powered Routers, Polacloud.com